Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Before we start, don't forget to follow us on Instagram where you can find more about us and regular updates about the Kurdish question. Search for everything about Kurdistan and hit the follow button right now. Also, consider supporting us by donating a free amount to our PayPal account or become a Patreon right now to unlock more things in everything about Kurdistan's world. For example, exclusive access to learning Kurdish as well as getting to decide your own subject as of what our documentaries should be about and which one we should produce next. More information in the description box below. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. During my lifetime, I've come across a bunch of people which ethnically are Kurdish but for some reason dismisses their ethnicity, their background and their heritage. In some cases, they call themselves Turks, Arabs and Persians. In other cases, they claim themselves to be Kurdish but have no interest in learning their language. Instead, they choose to only talk Turkish, Arabic or Persian. To understand why we are seeing this type of development among many Kurds, we have to look at three main reasons. The first one is the persecution of the Kurds. Since Kurdistan is divided between four main countries, Turkey, Iraq, Iran and Syria, the Kurdish people has throughout the years experienced persecution and exposure for mass killings, torture and human rights violations. Starting with the Kurds of Bakur, Turkish occupied Kurdistan. Naturally, most of the 25 million Kurds living there are located in the eastern parts of the country. However, there are also a lot of Kurds in the western part of the country. But how did they get there? Well, the Kurds from northern Kurdistan occupied by Turkey has either fled to the western part of the country or as in many cases been displaced there by force. The main reason behind the forced displacements are to Turkify the Kurds. This has been one of the main tactics by Turkey to remove the Kurdish identity from history. Alongside this tactic, the tactic of persecution and genocide has also been carried out by Turkey, not at least when over 70,000 Zaza Kurds were killed in the Dersim massacre. Another example is the Zilan massacre where about 40,000 Kurds were killed. The list of total genocides are unfortunately longer. Further on, the Kurds were forbidden to participate in Turkish politics, speaking Kurdish or to even claim that they are Kurdish. Soon enough, Turkey even forbid the Kurdish alphabet, making it harder for Kurds to name their children with Kurdish names. This explains why many Kurds from Bakur has Turkish names. Another act performed by the Turkish government was to implement the word Mountain Turks, a new way to deny the Kurdish existence. The Kurds who either fled or were forcibly displaced in western Turkey stood in front of one realistic option, to claim a Turkish identity. As occurred in a society where the majority of the people were Turkish and where the majority society were hostile against your identity and struggle, the choice of claiming a Turkish identity were both safer and would also grant them a better life as a Kurdish individual. Naturally, it is in the human nature to be drawn towards the easier option rather than the harder one. Through the years, the Kurds who lived in Western Turkey were less eager to raise up their child in a nationalistic Kurdish way. This opened up for a group of Kurds in Turkey which either have forgotten about their ethnicity or chosen to live by a Turkish identity. In Iran and Iranian-occupied Kurdistan, Rosh Halat, the methods have been different. The Kurds here have faced oppression like in all other occupied areas of Kurdistan. However, the difference comes in the culture, where Iran hasn't been able to oppress it in the same way as Turkey has. Reason for this is that Iran share a similar culture as the Kurds. Nowruz, for example, have never been forbidden in Iran or Iranian occupied Kurdistan, simply because it is sacred in Iran as well as in Kurdistan. 
the Iranian regime has instead aimed at attacking the Kurdish language and the Kurdish nationalism in Iran and while Turkey is calling the Kurdish resistance terrorism, Iran calls the Kurdish resistance separatism, which it sure is. However, Iran is using that word separatism in such an extent that the word no more has any value in Iran. It is simply being used as an excuse for everything that the Kurds do in Rojhala, no matter if it is true separatism or something else. Those who have lost their Kurdish identity in Iranian-occupied Kurdistan is fewer than in Turkish-occupied Kurdistan. However, they do exist and they claim that they belong to the Iranian nation. Now, this was the first reason. The second reason that I want to get into has to do with religion. Most Kurds in the world consider themselves being Muslims. Within the Islamic faith, worshipping God is the most important thing. According to some religious beliefs, nationalistic loyalty risks being in the way for loyalty towards God. Because of this, there is a group of Muslim Kurds who have chosen to leave their nationalistic side only focusing on their religious belief. This is of course nothing that concerns all Muslim Kurds. In fact, there are a lot of Kurds that practice their faith simultaneously as they are being nationalistic. Just look at one of the greatest Kurds of all time, Qazi Muhammad, who also was a big religious figure in the society of Kurdistan. At the same time as he was a big nationalistic role model for the Kurds. I'm not gonna argue for what people should believe in or not. This is of course up to every individual themselves to decide. But let's take a quick look at what some speakers of Islam says about this question. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The concept of, of nationalism uh, is one that a lot of people have, have spoken about in the last hundred years or so. Is nationalism Islamic? Is it un-Islamic? There are those who say that nationalism and the existence of nation states is itself a type of kufr, a type of shirk, a type of haram uh, sin to be a part of. And of course that is extremism because in the end of the day, this is a human construct that you can take the good and reject the bad from. In essence, it is possible, it is halal, it is completely reasonable to be a God-fearing, loyal member member of the Ummah, a muttaqi, a, a pious person, and at the same time, somebody who is a member of a nation state. One can conclude that Islam doesn't necessarily condemn nationalism. A concrete example of this is the story of Pharaoh and Moses, when Moses freed the Jewish people against slavery and took them to the promised land. This is a concrete example of a sort of nationalism performed and mentioned in the Quran and legalized through being a case of oppression from a ruling system towards an oppressed people kind of like how the Kurdish situation has been and is today. For the third and last point, we have the laziness to spread the Kurdish culture further on. So what do we mean by this? Many people who are born as a Kurd outside of Kurdistan and who grew up in a new country with a new language misses out their chance to learn their mother tongue Kurdish. It really is great that they are learning other languages especially if they live in that country and we do encourage that. However, we need to keep learning Kurdish to the diaspora Kurds and we can't forget to do this, especially not out of laziness. Because this problem will slowly create a new generation of Kurds who doesn't have a clue who they really are and how to speak their mother tongue. We would recommend our followers to speak Kurdish at home and the country's language when you're away from home. Also, sign up your children for Kurdish education through mother tongue lessons, something that every democratic country offers to their citizens. Whether it's about the Kurds of Bashur, Rojhalat, Rojava or Bakur, everything about Kurdistan urges the Kurds to keep their culture, language and heritage close and learn out all about them to the future generations. And if you need help on your way, don't hesitate to contact us through Instagram where we want to help you in this question.
I hope you liked this video. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me in the comment section below. Give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any further videos on this channel.